Charles, and a very good morning and a warm welcome at this spl splendid place uh, on behalf of KNL Gates. Thanks very much for joining us this morning and uh, the conference on changing shape of the German real estate investment market. What are we going to talk about today? I think I have the role of introducing a bit the obvious and, and stating what those of you who have not yet looked uh, as close as others to the German market uh, would want to see as a first introduction and then we come to the more detailed and more sophisticated points on the panel. So I think this is the one I should use. What are we looking at to get today? First of all, I'd like to do uh, a little presentation of a role model to you. Um, then we would be talking about why Germany, what would you want to know, and what the panels all are about. Now, when looking at a new market, I think it's always good to have someone to look at who has been already very successful. And if I look at this floor here, I could probably pick a very uh, high number of names of you and choose as a role model as, as to who is doing successful business in Germany. Now, of course, um, that would be probably the worst sin I could ever commit. And, and uh, I, I'd, I would rather pick someone who is not exactly in immovable property. So. Here you have my idol, or one of my idols in the 70s, the mighty mouse, who played at HSV, the, the Hamburger Sportverein, 77 through 1980, who by that time was the highest ever paid player, had the highest transfer sums when he came and when he went. He uh, earned uh, honorary titles such as Savior of Hamburg and Mighty Mouse, as you know him. He made league champion in 1978, European footballer of the year, and so on and so forth. The most important thing you, certainly you want to know about him is that he is a famous singer, singing Head Over Heels in Love, which whenever you have a chance to hear that, sounds a bit like Smokey, I wonder why. So, why Germany? Well. Whenever you have such a successful role model, you know you have to know the market. You have to go to Germany for the location only. So look, Germany is located at the, at the very center of Europe. And if you are, for instance, in logistics, it's the natural place to be, but also in others like headquarters in Europe, in uh, European headquarters in Germany. It's the location which is one of the most recommending factors of being in, Europe, in German real estate. The obvious one, of course, is that the German economy right now is uh, gladly doing more or better and is in better shape than others due to very harsh reforms made in the early years of the last decade. We have a very educated, highly educated population. We have a strong and innovative industry. And last not least, and that's probably most important for many of you, we have a very, very stable real estate market, despite of the, very, uh, the crisis we have seen. Compared to international standards, Germany has still been very stable which of course is the flip side that a stable market may not be the best place to be for those who are very opportunistic in their investments. It's, it's obvious that the ECB, sorry, it should, be, it should read EZB instead of EZB, uh, has the lowest interest rates ever, so why, when to invest if not now? Germany is certainly open to investment of other nations. It's very open. It's a welcoming uh, country. Leave aside some local initiatives and leave aside one or the other tax inspector. But apart from that, it is a very welcoming. It has, we will talk about that in more detail, seven key markets in real estate rather than only one as other countries would have. Briefly to touch on the risk, of course, it's the obvious to state the European crisis has to be borne in mind. And looking at the current negotiations of the upcoming coalition in Berlin, 
well, they may switch into spending mode and uh, sort of set up a couple of reg regulations now. Uh, watch that closely. Um, and also, um, what we will be talking later on is the rental break, etc. But that shall not sort of confuse you as to look at Germany as a very prosperous real estate market. Briefly, what to know about the German market. To be successful, first, it's the easy one to sort of benefit from the lessons learned. I think the most important lesson which I always hear from my clients is that it is important to understand Germany, there is no such thing as a German real estate market. There is a multitude of local markets in each and every asset class. So if you understand that and if you understand uh, the legal environment, which some of the investors in the 2006-07 may not have looked closely enough at, and the mentality of the people, will they buy um, multifamily houses in the pri privatization efforts as some have planned or not? So if you look at the mentality of the people, you are, I think, on safe grounds. Classic errors, and I will just only refer to one or two, is to ignore real estate as an asset class, which we have seen in the past. Or one of my favorites is further down, is uh, the privatization, the acquisition uh, profits, sorry, the acquisition profits, uh, which have been shown by some investors telling the market that their counterparts were stupid idiots and not sort of hitting the market price. The other one are technical points like uh, not ignoring legal framework. You will have to have a very close look if you invest in Germany on the legal lease system. They work different from the US. They work different from other markets. They are welcoming. They are open in some aspects, but they have their pitfalls. So be well advised. The other one, perhaps, uh, and that comes from a tax lawyer, you may be surprised, but you have to strike a balance, <laughs> typically, uh, between an ideal structure and one that is manageable, so that you can present it as a credible investment. What has changed over the past years, Charles has spoken about many of the points, so I can leave them out. Uh, to a great big deal. The next uh, wave seems to be A locations and B cities and C cities. Don't move the capital letters around. It is not B locations and A cities or leave alone B or C cities. What has changed? If you, if you look at a 10 year period, 10 years ago, you would look at a building in terms of financing and try to understand what the lending value that is probably a, a sad translation of Beleihungswert would have been, what I learned when I did a bank apprenticeship. Then some, at the early years of the last decade, you would only look at the discounted cash flows, which completely ignore what asset class you would be looking at. Nowadays, I think this has become much more sophisticated in terms of valuation, in terms of financing, etc. So the whole environment has changed. Some old words, th th those who have, as me, a bit of gray hair on their hat may remember words like pr uh, portfolio premium, etc. cetera. Um, they have gone away. So what are the trends? What, what will be the market in five years' time? Now, if I knew that, I'd probably not be standing here. So let's ask the panels. Residential. When, you, when we're coming from Expo, I think the only word I was hearing was residential, Berlin, Berlin residential. But why don't you open up a fund of residential in Berlin? Are there any other markets around which may be interesting? Another point may be, have a look at the success at the moment of the, the listed companies, the listed real estate companies. Many years we have been looking at uh, listed companies in a way that why should I buy those shares because the NAV is far above uh, their current quote at the stock exchange. And you may see in other countries that they have not had a too good of a fortune, but in Germany it may be an interesting place to look at and it may be an interesting way of structuring your investment at least in a long-term perspective. 
I'll flip a couple of the other sort of points and come to the office market. Everybody wants to invest in core now. We know that obviously there is not enough product. And much of the things, question tag, are they core at the moment, which we treat as core? Is there enough uh, sort of alternative product? Or are we, again, question tag, over allocating in an asset class? What are the new sort of buzzwords of the time? What does it mean to manage to core? Logistics, next panel. It's certainly a hot market. Has it seen its peak? Are we looking at just a few tenants driving the market and then is that a, a, a too much of a risk to look to very few tenants? What are the new sort of concepts and storing techniques? How are they driving that? Distressed. Are we still waiting or is it coming for the wave? Like when we went out in 2000, was it, what was it, 2003 or so, discussing distressed transactions, being sort of in meetings with banks, they would just, if they were kind enough, they wouldn't just expel us and, and send us out of the house. Next year, they would come back and ask, well, then my neighbor had a, may have a problem. I'd like to learn a little bit about the techniques. And the year thereafter, we all know what happened in the market. Where are we standing now? Or are we not going to see that wave because cash sweeps do, le uh, t uh, to le do lead to amortizations that the banks have never dreamt of when they were concluding the finance agreements? Retail, what are the trends of today? Which kind of shopping centers are we looking at? High street markets, what are the lessons, lessons learned? Are we seeing new listed retail companies in the next months? New financing, what's the new normal? Is there a new normal? Or what's the new standard financing structure? Will we see CMBS coming back? beyond the few transactions we have seen earlier this year. Technical due diligence, what's hot there? How can we save energy? One of the ma major topics right now of the government. To what extent is that useful or not? I'm not sure whether we discussed that today. And will we rather build green buildings or will we start sort of making buildings greener in future. Digitalization, very interesting to me. Will the auctions work in Germany on a, on a sustainable basis? Will the bidders pay what they bid it for in the auction process? Or does it need a German notary's uh, authority to make them pay? Of course, deals need to be notarized. I don't want to question that. But uh, will it work sort of uh, that the auctions are accepted? And will we come to a stage where we have transparency as we would see it in other states like the US in markets and deals? So as you will see in the minute, the conclusion would be if you follow all the recommendations which you will hear from that panel, or if you don't, and you'll hear an example right now, see an example right now, if you play it sometimes the hard way, sometimes the soft or smoky way, then you certainly cannot help falling head over heels in love with Germany. So there was supposed to come a, a, a song now. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.